sir. Good afternoon, Ezra. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Aiden and Mary Lee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You said nothing at me? You're throwing objects? You're throwing pins? No. No. Push the door. Can someone 
to go to clever.com and log in and you'll be okay. Now, once you're on Clever, where do you need to go in order to find Mathia? Yep, so obviously my page. Where on my page though? Uh, I don't think it's shared with me. Uh, let me ask this. What is the textbook curriculum that we have? Carnegie. Carnegie. Learning. Scroll down, like I hearted my Carnegie Learning so it's under favorites, but scroll down to the bottom of the page until you see CL for Carnegie Learning. It should be in the middle of the top. Once you log in to Carnegie Learning, you will see two different courses there. Wait, I don't know. Did you scroll all the way? Oh, yeah, it's going to be here. There you go. Once you click on Carnegie Learning, there you go, you're going to see two different courses all the way at the bottom. 
okay? Carnegie Learning is all the way at the bottom of Clever, once you get there. Again, you're going to see two courses. The one on the left does not work anymore. You need to click on the one on the right where it says materials. Click on materials for the one on the right. And then where are we going to go for Matthew? Does it not tell you Matthew right now? Hold on. I lied. You actually need the one on the left. It's not the one on the right. Click on materials. You have to find. No, don't go to my page. It's just at the bottom. So, you can change the avatar to whatever you want. On the left, click on materials. But you're gonna have to. There's no space on the yeah. All right. Stop and listen. You can change the avatar all you want later. What I need you to see right now is that you have an assignment, correct? What is the name of that assignment? John Drew Data Analysis Review for the Nine Weeks Exam. This assignment is technically not due until Friday, but uh, there are 10 workspaces. It'll take you a good bit of time to work through this. It is designed to be a review to get ready for your exam, which is on what day? Friday. 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 Your exam is on Thursday. I made it due on Friday because I know it'll take you a little bit more time. But you'll click on where it says, let's go. And you'll start with unit one right there. It will not let you go to the next set of workspaces, but notice how it says least squares regression. Isn't that what we just studied? Right, bivariate data. Some of us need a little bit more practice with that content before an exam, right? So there is no way to cheat the system with this. The only thing you can do is work. But the reason why I like Matthew, and I'm glad we finally have the iPads to make this work, is Matthew will give you help and give you hints to help you master the content. So if you are making mistakes and struggling, hey, to Marlon, if you are making mistakes and struggling, it's going to give you extra supports to be successful. If you're blowing through because you know how to do everything, it'll speed up and go faster. I cannot tell you how long it's going to take. The only thing I can tell you is it will take as long as it needs to to help you master it. Hear me very clearly on this. If you sit there and don't read instructions, you will struggle. Let me say that one more time. If you sit there and do not read instructions, there will be times where you struggle. Now, let me show you one thing with this assignment. I ain't loading. Okay, I'll come and look at it in a second. One thing that I want to show you about this assignment is, actually, I don't need that. I need... So, when you launch these workspaces, right, I can jump around because I um, am the teacher for it. You will see some workspaces where it has a blue dot just already filled in. Those are just uh, teaching workspaces to give you information and help you work through things. The left one, Jordan. Okay, they're there to help you work through some concepts. Read the instructions. This one will get frustrating if you don't read what's on the left-hand side. Read the instructions because it'll tell you exactly what to do. Matthew, my guy. Now, those are learning workspaces. If you look here where it says using linear regression, when I launch it, nope, that's still a learning workspace. I thought there was a practice one in here. So both of those are learning workspaces. I want, is it this one? So these learning workspaces, I'll go ahead and tell you work pretty quickly. Okay, right here, pay attention. Notice right here how it's telling us there's a step-by-step -step example. I highly recommend that you do the step-by-step -step example because it's gonna walk you through every single step. 
you already know a good bit about dot plots, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that Matthew has you work through it may be a little bit different or just the technology side of it's a little bit uh, different. So you need to know what Matthew is expecting you to do. Go through the step-by-step -step example once and it'll help speed everything up along the way. Is that clear? So, when are all these workspaces due? Friday. Friday. I'll go ahead and tell you, it'll take you a while, that's why I'm giving you until Friday. Do not wait till the last minute, especially those of y'all that have tomorrow off. Now, I will say this, this is not designed to be a five hour assignment or anything close to that. If you're sitting there and you're struggling, don't sit there for two, three hours just struggling not being able to get something. I can see how long you're on an assignment and how long you're actively working on it. If you are work, actively working on it for a while and it's not making sense, put a pause, come into tutoring, ask questions, shoot me an email, there may be a problem or something like that that I need to address. But you need to actively work on it. Is that clear? What are your questions before we get to today's lesson? Why is it bothering? Okay, I'll come and look at it in a second. So no questions about our assignment and what we need to do. No, no sir. Thank you. Once you get logged in, you complete the workspace, dude. Joey, dude, you had a bad man. I told you I would come and look at you. All right. So. We are going to wrap up this lesson to hip to be square before we get back to looking at some important details from the test. Alright, so let's have our textbook out, activity 2.3, where we're going to look at these different transformations and again we're going to get back to our test and analyze the test. Wesley, you awake over there, man? Wesley, come on, man. You can't just be like, oh, I'm tired, so I'm going to put my head down and go to sleep. we got 90 minutes to learn as much math as possible. <laughs> an hour and a half. We don't even have 90 minutes at this point. All right. So, lesson two, hit to be square. I know that's been a bit of a struggle up to this point. I will remind you on assessments, you will have to do, uh, you'll have to create perpendicular lines. You will have to duplicate line segments. If you need to borrow a compass, let me know and I'll let you borrow it and take it home and practice with it. Um, but right now, we are on lesson or activity 2.3. When looking at activity 2.3, we're all there on the page. Can you get your book out? How do you do the belt ring without your book? Oh, you came in late. You may have come in late, but like, I don't know we need a book, right? Okay. So, for those of us who were unfamiliar with these terms, first off, I will point this out. We actually talked about these transformations right here. What is a translation again? Right, it's a slide or a shift, so this could be to the right and down, could have been down and to the right, those are translations, where it goes left, right, up and down. Uh, what, is, what was number two? There's a reflection, I'll get that later. Well, reflection is like a what? A mirror. a mirror, right? It's a flip over that line of reflection. So we have seen these terms before, right Joey? When we did this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a rotation is literally when it rotates around a point, okay? So this would have rotated around that point by 90 degrees. What are your questions? What, those three terms? Okay, but if you had looked at page 28, what does it say? Translation. Where did you say that? Oh. Joey, I'm literally pointing it out to you right up here. Uh, right? 
So, quick point of order on this. Yeah. Hopefully that was it. We'll find out. Um, so, there are more transformations than just translations, rotations, and reflections. Does anyone remember the other transformation? Starts with a D. Say again. A what? Not a derivative. Nobody. Dilations. Stretches. Compressions. Okay. An eye and Taylor. Do you all need to be separated so that you can focus? Go on. An eye up here. Group one. Group one. Y'all are not productive as healthy as you are. Okay. Okay. So, dilations are the other transformation that we have to study. Y'all have a note that you need to share with the class? What is then put it up. So that we can focus. Um, dilations are the only other transformation that we will study that we'll study it later. For right now, we are specifically looking at translations, reflections, rotations. These transformations have a special name to them. Does anyone see it on the page? A rigid motion. Okay. Okay. Right there. A rigid motion is a special type of transformation that preserves the size and shape. So, if I take this square right here and I translate it to the right, will the size and shape of that square change? No. No. It, it should not. If I've drawn it correctly, it might change a little bit because I'm a terrible artist. But a translation will not change that square. If I reflect across this line, will that square change shape? If I take a, let's say I take a marker and I reflect it across that line, does the marker change size? I mean, did you see the marker change size? It is changing direction, but the question was, will it change size or shape? No. no. Literally, right here, it tells us a rigid motion. This word preserves means what? Stays same. Keeps it the same. So if I reflect, will it change the size or shape? No. No. So if it's a translation, a reflection, or a rotation, it will not change the size or shape. You need to highlight and underline and bold and everything that statement because the idea of a rigid motion is critical to what we will study for the next three, four, five weeks. We will not spend that entire time on this particular unit, but that is critical to what we will study. I found all of them. What? Everything you did study. What, what part of that sounded hard? Translation? Dilation. We're not studying dilations yet. Do you know what a translation is? A, a slide? Yeah. Do you know what a reflection is? A flip over a line? Okay, don't don't make it hard. Wesley, my man, you can't put your head down this way. Alright. So, what we're looking at right now is, and I know it was a struggle, I know we didn't perfect it or anything like that, but we worked on creating a square, right? We worked on it. What we learned and we should know about squares is that all sides are equal. When you say equal, what do you mean? Their what's are equal? The angle. Not the angle, the sides. The length. The, say it again. The lengths of each side are the same. Now the opposite sides are what, Lillian? Opposite sides are parallel. 
but each consecutive side creates what kind of angle? Right. Right. right angle. So that's why we needed perpendicular lines and we needed to be able to duplicate those side lengths there. And so now we have a square and Philippe, we're looking here, says I can translate a square to the right and to the left an infinite number of times. So it takes one square, translates it to the right, translates it to the left. Then we're taking that entire row and going up and down. What is created when we put infinitely many squares next to each other like that? I heard one person say it, I think. A coordinate plane, how'd you get that? Yeah, it looks like a coordinate plane also. What does it say? To create a coordinate plane. Now, it, it's right here in the book, where Philippe says it. Okay? One thing to clarify is this. Are you going to put the x and y axis in the middle of a square? No. No. That's just to show the direction of the transformations. If you're going to put an x and y axis, it needs to be on those lines. That could be my x and y axis. But right now, I just want you to talk as a small group for a little bit about what other sequences of rigid motions can you use to create a coordinate plane? Note, what did Philippe again do? He used a... What did he use? How, how did he... What, what did he do with the squares? Translated, right? He's using a translation rigid motion. Talk about it for just a couple minutes with your small group about maybe how we could use a reflection or a rotation. So what you want to recognize is we're starting with one square. How can you take that one square and create an entire coordinate plane with it? Use the transformations that are there on that page and we'll talk about it. Let's get to talking for just a couple minutes. Is that iPad helping you complete this problem? But I have a way. Come on, what transformations can we look for? Talk about it. What with a prediction? You don't have to get perfect. I say reflect. Could you reflect that square? Is that a possibility? And write your answers down. I like it. Thinking through things, okay. talking it out. Okay. Have we talked about this at all? What do we talk about? Okay, I can't help you if you want to talk with me, but I'll go check on others. Let's have some ideas. We have a whole class on the The question that has number one, right? What other sequences of rigid motions can you use to create a So remember, the lead translated to the right, translated down, to the left, and then once he did that, he just translated the entire row down and translated the row up. But how can we use transformations? Okay. So, like, how are you going to rotate it, right? So, you have a square like that. What are you going to, how are you going to rotate it? Get more of that. I don't know. 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 I don't know.
So if I take this square and I rotate it 90 degrees, maybe around this point, yeah. what would it look like? Where would that square now be? Rotate. Notice this side would go where? Yeah. To here? So then where would uh, maybe this side be? Uh, to the right. Oh. Uh, if that side is going to the right and down, don't I need to continue that direction? So then that side would be here? Where would this side be if I were to rotate it 90 degrees? On the bottom, right? And then this top piece would be here on the side? Okay, I mean that may look like a projector. I'm just showing you the 90 degrees here. Okay. Jamie, did you want to add anything on to that? That 90 degree rotation? Okay. Hey guys, it's time for a whole class discussion. The discussion needs to focus up here and we can add more on as a whole class. Did any other groups besides group one, I'll come to them in a second, any other groups talk about a rotation or how what we could do from here? Did y'all talk about rotations as well? Um, we did. <coughs> well, we were wondering if you could, like, if for the problem you could use, like, two, like, if you did translation and went di down diagonally and then did a reflection to move over in space. Oh. And then went back up. So, could we do more than one transformation? Okay, so I'll come to that in a second. But, uh, group one, y'all talked about rotations, right? What did y'all do from here? Is this what group one did? Focus. You get going. So if I were to rotate this again, I would get a square here. And if I take that square and I rotate it again, it fills in here. Now I have a nice big square, right? I could continue with just the small square, but could I rotate now that really big square? So if I were to take this really big square and rotate it from here, I would end up with that. And I would take that again and rotate it. Take that again and rotate it. Now I have an even bigger square. Could I continue to rotate that square? Yes? Now, do I have to rotate this whole time? Maddie? Oh, I was going to say we did reflection. Could we do a reflection? Yeah. Yeah? Maybe start with that small square and I could reflect. I'll point this out. Could I reflect from here? Yes. Yes? yes? Yeah. If I were to reflect over this line, reflecting that would end up over here, and the size and the shape would be the same. same. So can I do more than one transformation? Yeah. Very much so. What did you say? I said that's a lot of translations. Well, translations. Remember, translations are only the shifts or slides left and right, up and down. Oh my God! The are you so aggressive with it. What's up? What? Steal a ruler? Don't the back counter. Now, don't steal it. You can borrow it and bring it back. All right. So, I want to point this out. The idea, the main idea is that translations, rotations, reflections, they do what to the size and shape? 
Say that louder. Translations, rotations, reflections keep the size and shape the same while moving those squares or any shape around the coordinate plane. And that's an important part of what we're going to learn um, on what is y'all's exam Thursday. We're going to learn more about it on Friday. So we're reviewing until Thursday. So here's what we're looking at with number two. We're now going to use the idea of those rigid motions. So each of these figures were constructed using rigid motions, starting with line uh, segments constructed in one or more squares. So I'm going to work through 2A with y'all before I have y'all work a little bit on your own. Let's say I'm looking at this line segment. That one just right there, it's just in one square. How could I transform that? Use a translation, a rotation, or a reflection to get another piece of that square. I'm going to let Maddie talk first. What are you thinking? Okay, how are you going to reflect it? Dakota, how are you going to reflect it? Good, it hasn't been off. If I reflect it to the left, it's going to end up over here. Well, I want, I, no, okay, let me clarify. We took this one line segment, and we used our transformations to create the rest of this blue square. Or, yeah. What am I going to do to the right? I thought if you were going to reflect it, it was going to be the bottom half of it. So could we reflect it so that we get this? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Would that give us part of it? Yeah. Yeah? You can reflect it across both the y-axis. Okay, if I reflect it across the y-axis, though, I get here now. So I don't know that I want to go there. I will point this out. Let's pause and look at this. From here, how am I going to get the rest of this piece? There's something I, I would, I like the idea of a reflection. There's something I would have done first, though. Say again. Okay, so duplicate it, yes. But remember, we're using our transformations. You, so you're talking about duplicating this up here? Yeah, so then that way you can, um, like, translate. Say that one more time. Like, once you have the line duplicated, then it's the right size, I guess, or you can do something with it. Well, right, but how can I get this line segment up to here? Don't you rotate it? Okay, how would you rotate it? Oh, wait. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, maybe a reflection. Could I just translate it up? Yeah. Can I take this and translate it up to here? Yeah. Right? That would be to the right one and up one, or just translating up to the right? Okay, Wesley. My guy. Jaden. Eyes need to be up here so that you can be a part of the whole class conversation and learn. There we go. I'm sorry that I care about your education. I want you to be successful. But if your eyes aren't up here, you can't look. So translating gives me this whole line segment now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I have a lot of options. Reflect. How am I going to reflect it? When you say to the right, draw a line up here that we're going to reflect across. Come on. Shut up, dude. Yeah, I don't think you should ever make fun of someone for, I don't know, trying. Okay, but I'm asking, what's the line of reflection? What are you reflecting over to get that? No, 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 no. sorry. Let me clarify this. Does anyone understand the question I'm asking with no. what line we're reflecting over? Jamie, come up here. Actually, Jamie, you've answered some a lot. Janai, you want to try it? Come on with it. It's okay. I want some predictions. We don't have to be perfect. Well, Nathan had his hand up, so I'm going to respect him and let him try. So, what I'm looking for is a line that we're going to reflect that line segment over. I want a line. Okay, try it. Draw, draw the line that you think it is. Okay, so you can see this real quick? Alright, so go ahead and see. That's a prediction. Now, I'm going to point this out. If this is the line that I reflect over, what that means is this point is two uh, diagonals away, so then it would go two diagonals away over here. This point is two diagonals away, so over here and then here. So I want y'all to note, 
when I'm talking about a reflection, it's going to go, oh, it's going to start here and go over that line to here. Do I want this line? No? Okay. So, good prediction. I'm going to let Maddie go, and then Lillian had her hand up. So, if we want to push back on, I'll let Lillian push back on it. So, we're making some predictions. Let's look some more. Okay, so that's the line we're reflecting over. So I want y'all to think about this. Actually, Lillian, you look like you want to push back on it. Okay? Draw a different line up here with a different marker. So I want y'all to pay attention to the difference between the line that I'm trying to get and the line of reflection. Look at this point right here. How far is that point from this blue line? One. So if I reflect, it's going to go one below to get to this point. You see how this point right here is on that blue line? So when I reflect, it's going to stay where it is. And if I take this point that's two above the blue line, when I reflect, it's going to be two below. So this blue line, can I reflect over it to get this line segment right there? Does that clarify, make sense? we we'll go with those ideas. So now my challenge to you is this. We have one line of reflection. We have half this image done. Work with the people around you for just 60 seconds. Try to find another line of reflection to get this piece on the right. Work within your small groups. 60 seconds. Try to find another line of reflection to get that other piece over there. Yes, Maddie. So this is all right well, we haven't done that yet. We only have this piece right here, and then we reflect it across this green line to get this piece down here. We still need that right part. Huh. No, no, no. We only have these pieces right now. We, have, we started with that piece. You reflect it across this one to get this piece. So how are we going to take, what are we going to do to this purple to get the right-hand side? Talk about it. You're on this one. Remember, we're not trying to get that left hand side. We're trying to get this blue. We're trying to get that one line segment to go to this blue here. Uh, you sure? it's similar, but remember, we, what we have right now is, if I look at this graph, I have this left hand side. I still need the right hand side. How am I going to get that right hand side? Okay, okay. Okay. Because in your language, be more clear. There is something to what you're saying, but we need to be more clear with that language to really explain what's happening. When you say the same thing, what transformation are you talking about? So, you see how. So, the mathematical word is a reflection, right? There you go. Reflection. But what am I reflecting? And what am I reflecting over? If I reflect over that line, will it give me the right hand piece? Think about it. Here's this point, right? When I reflect it, it would go to about here. Here's this point when I reflect it, it goes to about here. This point, reflect over to here. Does that give you the right hand side? Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I already know a handful of us know for sure the correct answer, but I want to let other people talk for a second. Uh, people I haven't talked with yet. Who has a prediction for how I can get the right hand side of that figure? How do I even get on the first place? Well, we're about to talk about it. Did you talk about it with your group at all? We tried. We're about to talk about it, Joey, but. Okay, but did you try with them? Then you can't ever get upset, my man. Alright, moving beyond that statement. All right, um, I appreciate the honesty, but can't can't do that in my class. Prediction from somebody about how I could transform those two line segments I currently have to get the two I'm missing. 
Any predictions other than Lillian's? What do you mean the lion in the middle? Can you show me? Come on. She acted all scared and stuff. Okay. So I'm reflecting across that line. Lillian, what do you think about that statement? Yes? Remember, hey listen, when we reflect, listen up, when you reflect, the distance from the line of reflection is also maintained. This point is one unit away, right? So I'm going to go one unit to the right. This point is on the line of reflection, so it stays there. This point is how far away? So it's going to go two to the right. One to the right, okay. Does that finish it out? Yes. So we use a translation and two lines of reflection. Now, I want to point this out. This is not the only correct way to do this. So let's look at some other alternatives. I just want you to see that there are multiple ways. Um, and then we will pause here and go to the, uh, uh, looking at the test that we need to examine. I will point this out. Yes, Joey. What do you mean? How do you get the second order? Well, were you awake and paying attention when we did it all together? Okay, well, I'm going to show you a second way to do it. Pay attention to this. One thing I will point out really quickly. Wesley. My guy. Golly. The hood over your head is not going to help you grow and learn. I don't like them though, I'm tired too. I, I get it, but that's not going to help you grow and learn. You actually have to learn from my class. So, looking up here, one of the things I will point out is, it all it said was it was a line segment. Did it say that it had to be only one? Or could it have been this whole section? Right? That might have made our job easier. Alright? You could have started with that whole line segment so we didn't have to translate. Could I have started by reflecting over this line? Yes. That would give me this, wouldn't it? Yes. And then what would I do? And you Where's that other dotted line, that other line of reflection going to be? The X. And then that gives me those pieces, doesn't it? Say that again. Could we do a rotation too? I'm glad you brought that up. Let's say I have this line segment. Could I rotate it 90 degrees to get to here? Because that's a right angle right here. And you reflect 90 degrees again? Not reflect. Well, reflect, yes, but not 90 degrees. Rotations are angle measures. But could I reflect over to here? Yeah. So great point, right? Remember, math at its core is the study of patterns and relationships. All of you can be successful. I'm trying to set you up. I'm not doing it perfectly all the time, and I get that. But trust me, work with me, and do your best. So there we go. So one of the things I want to now quickly look at is this. Um, B, and then we'll go to the test. Anybody have an idea what starting line segments I could have to then transform it and get the rest? So I haven't told you where to start with the, transfer, uh, the line segments, but does anybody have anything? Marlon, you got a prediction of where we could start? It doesn't have to be right. Just a prediction. That's all I need. Come on. It looks like you had something going. All right. Anybody else want to give us a starting point? Come on, Jamie. See what she does. See if you want to modify it at all. While Jamie's doing this, I'm going to go ahead and pass out the bivariate test. Because I forgot to give that back. All right. What do y'all think? Is that a good starting point? All right. So Marlon, you want to modify it at all? Thomas. All right. So let's see what Tomorrowland's going to modify it to be. Okay, so what's Tomorrowland going to do? Wesley, Anaya, Lillian. Are you going to change it at all? No, you're going to leave it as is? Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, Jordan. Can you pass that back to Jordan? 
Um, okay, so I want to point this out. What would we do to this line segment now to get to the rest? But remember, we need transformations, right? What transformations could I use at this point? Okay, here's the thing though. You see how this is two across? This is not actually two. Hey guys, I'm trying to teach. Pay attention. Okay, so you're talking about this one right here? Okay? Which that would be a reflection. I, I Actually, I could do a reflection or could I just do a translation down for it? Right? So that would be an option. So I need to explain that. But here's the thing. Once I have these two, how are you going to get those other four? Okay? But here's the thing, if I rotate it, it's not going to quite work for me because they're not the same lengths. This is one, and this is two, and this is a right triangle. So I need to do what? One squared plus two squared equals c squared. What am I using there to find this? That Pythagorean theorem. So that would give me a one plus four. Five is equal to c squared. C is actually the square root of five, but how long was this? Two. So are they the same length? No. So I want you to notice we can't actually do use just that point or just that line segment. Could I use this though? What could I do with that piece? Reflection. Reflection. There's multiple places to reflect, but if I reflect across here, I get this piece and that piece. If I reflect there, I now get boom, boom, boom. Okay? No, the idea was that we did just a couple of my segments and then. There you go. Okay, you got it tomorrow. All right. At this point, go ahead. We're going to pause here. Um, if you want to take some notes about how we could have done that, please do that quickly. But then get out your test that I gave back yesterday. Huh? I did, but I forgot to write it on there. Okay. I think I, think I stopped when we were talking. Give that to back to me at the end of class so I can quickly put the scores on there. Okay. Devin. Actually, I have scans of it, so you can take it home. I just didn't get a chance to put scores on it. Devin. Maddie. Trent. Addison's not here. Karia. Jaden. Aiden. There you go. Okay, you know, I'm going to go. Joey. Nathan. Emily. Where's yours? Can you take this test? Okay, get it out. Ezra. Ethan? You never took this one, did you? That's what you stated behind that for today. But I had that meeting. So, if you did what you to do is. Oh, why not? So, I did it for the It's fine. So, it's fine. 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 It's I need y'all to pause because we're going to talk through most of these to give y'all a chance to take notes and prepare for the nine weeks test. These two tests, the one I gave back yesterday and the one that I just gave back, are what your nine weeks tests are on. These are the things you need to study, so you need to make sure you take notes and correct the things that you need to correct. What was your question? So, Okay. Or, 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 or
No. 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 Sorry guys, I forgot I need to put this out. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Wait, don't do you don't have a favorite. You know, it's like How many lists do we have? One. One. 